the headphones back on where it was like catch up and I'm like what? <laughs> oh just when we what have we been up to and what are we doing? Like I usually yeah. reorder them so that I'm last to bring us back in when I'm hosting. Oh, I, and you I didn't, just, so you'll just have to give us the cue I for just, who goes first I just instead remember. of. No. Yeah. <laughs> Where's OBS? Ba, ba, ba. That's not. Oh my god, OBS. I need to get out of this dialogue tree so I can save. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, I just launched Battle.net. Let, <sighs> let the okay. Tremere just have to go on. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> save game. All right. Get out. Get out. Yay, we're live. Hooray. Yay, we're live. And I heard it's going through. So I don't have to look at that anymore. Let me look at my notes. Another window. Close this window. Move this window. <laughs> All the windows. Yeah. <sighs> To the Which... window, to the wall. <laughs> the Discord, okay. That would be live notification, yay. Yep. Go away. Um... Oh, and I wanted to put in here a note about. I actually sent a Discord message to Zoe Brings Bacon earlier. <laughs> I was like, you know, have you ever read this book? Because I was wondering all of a sudden if it had anything to do with your handle. <laughs> <laughs> and she has not, but. Okay, there's OBS. Yes. All right, give me test, please. Okay. okay, testing my mic. Yep. Test one, two. Okay. Yep, we all seem to be about the same level. Yay. Mm -hmm. Woo. I really love the recording Discord channel for that. <laughs> <sighs> That's a pretty bodice vest thing you're wearing. Mm -hmm. It's part of the dress I made. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> the bottom the bottom has a split skirt that goes over and it's uh, solid. So it's butterflies down and then a solid split skirt over the top. So it's I've improved the pattern. I'll get into that when we're when we're recording. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Man, I really wanna improve my sewing skills, but I don't have I had time to ask. for everything I wanna do. I had to ask uh, one of our uh, seamstress gurus. I was like, how, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> yeah, fortunately, um, if I ever do work on it, improving my skill more, I have lots of people I can tap for that kind of thing. One day I will pull out the sewing machine. Mm -hmm. All right, I need to pull this one so I have it. Um, no, get out of here. I'm not smelling. Well, gosh, we didn't have any technical difficulties, so now we're... Don't jinx early. us. Do you have wood? Knock on it. <laughs> I have plywood all around me. That counts, right? Yeah, it totally counts. Sure. I'm Wait, just that... hoping... All right, that end table might actually be a solid piece instead of plywood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I reset the bot earlier. Hey, I can close all this uh, stuff about the Olympics that's still open in a bunch of tabs. <laughs> and the tab queen. <laughs> we have another whole Google window full of 
stuff from several episodes of Heresy and Hearsay ago. Wow. I figure I should I should put the the whole title in there, even if it's real long. <laughs> yeah. So I'll test our stuff. <sighs> yep, Nightbot's behaving. I thought I would actually see anybody on Halloween for like actual Halloween things. I would totally do an Elvira costume this year. <laughs> we have game oh, on I saw Halloween. she came out. I know, but I can't do Elvira as Celeste. Well, no, but I mean, I'm, I'm saying you'll see people just oh. in costumes that we wear all the time. Yeah. Except not... for me. Mine's a new costume. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, she was always one of my favorites. Like, when my mom made me my slinky vampire dress, I didn't tell her. I told her it was Morticia Adams that I wanted it for, and not Elvira, because you don't want your, like, 11-year-old daughter talking about Elvira. But I always thought she was the coolest even then. It was like, I think she might be my earliest, like, do I want to be her, or do I want to be with her? <laughs> Maybe both. I'm not sure. Well, I'm 11, early and it's weird. <laughs> early crush. She was definitely an early crush. So like the the current story about her and, and finding love with her girl and I'm like, Yay! That makes me so happy. Yeah, I just saw the headline before I came to the computer. I haven't read it. But I was like Well duh <laughs> <laughs> Yep. And then also she has a new book that I think just came out as well, which is another reason for the article I read what was an interview with the advocate. Should we should we add it to book club? There you go. I'm not opposed. I never I haven't read it. Oh, that's mm -hmm. something we should add to notes if we want to roll on the oh, yeah. chart for the next show during this course. Let me let me find it. Where I have to find it every single time. I have a, I have four minutes. Book. Yep. Starred. Okay. That's it. Yours cruelly. Yours cruelly. That's mm -hmm. cute. Yeah. <laughs> She's so much fun. <laughs> Where did I put it? It's admin stuff? Book club. There it is. Okay. Okay, so... Um, we read Lamb. Uh, so... So we've got... Um, tr Trigor, is that the newest, or do we, so he's so got another book, but I think it's audio only that he's published mm -hmm. since then, but. Trigor, Dracula, The Alchemist, Memoirs of a Geisha, Book Thief, Magester Trilogy, Parable of the Sower, The Dove Keeper. And then yours cruelly, I guess. Yeah. It's, okay, uh... so that's nine. I don't have a nine-sided die, but I have a ten-sided die. So uh... <laughs> yours cruelly will have slightly more of a chance because I'll do nine at ten. It is new, cruelly. so I don't like. It literally just came out, so I don't know if we want to. Yeah, I can do eight. Think of another book we... to throw in there. Hmm? We can we can go we ahead and to. add it, um, even if we might want to wait a couple of weeks for it to, like, be yeah, printed. Like... So I can get an eight sided die then, and do that. <laughs> okay. Can we do that? So I'll, okay. I'll have that up, and we can roll on camera, I guess. <laughs> Unless you want me to roll now. <laughs> no. Either or. I think we can put that in the show. We'll do it at the end of discussion, I guess. Roll. I'll. I'll just make another note. Like roll for next book. Yeah. Yeah. What? I thought that was mine. 
Okay. <laughs> I saw a, a, a cursor and I thought it was mine. It was not. Um. <laughs> I mean, I did it once on purpose because I was subscribing to us <laughs> with my prime. I was like, hmm, I wonder the last time I did that was. I really should use that up. Especially because it's September. <laughs> you haven't pushed that at all. Yeah, we're actually, um, we're about to get rid of our like next year we're not going to subscribe to Prime anymore because um, we don't want to support it so there's that <laughs> okay you ready yep hey. we got perspective we got the cool we got the muscle and you know we have the rule we are the geek grills we are the geek grills alright we got the know-how, we got control, we got the knowledge, and we tell you how it rolls. We are the Geek Grills, we are the Geek Grills, all right. We are the Geek Grills, we are the Geek Grills, tonight. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hello, oh, and welcome to episode 208 of Geek Grills, the Geek Grills podcast supported primarily by our patrons. You can find us at patreon.com slash grills. I'm Linda, and I'm joined by my co-host, Amber. Hello. And Ray. Hello. Hello. So today's topic is book club. Book club time. Um, the book that we read is called Lamb, the Gospel According to Biff, Christ's Childhood Pal by Christopher Moore, which is a little bit of a mouthful, <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. So, well, uh, spoilers, I guess. Anyway, we'll get into that in a minute. <laughs> so, uh, what have y'all been up to? Ember? Well, I went to Digital Noir, uh, hosted by DJ Spider, mm -hmm. at the Milestone in Charlotte, which is the... I didn't really realize I knew it was historic and everything, but I also discovered while I was there, it's a poke gym in Go. Yay. And part of the described history it is the oldest music venue in Charlotte. So that was kind of neat. And fun as always. Um, a lot of elder goths. And we were happy to see how that goth industrial genre has lasted through the ages at this point. Like there were <laughs> different generations of people there. And the crowd was so diverse um, compared to what we usually see or did when we were younger. And that was exciting. Mm. Um, my son has the Rona. I got mm. home from our foray into Charlotte, and he's like, Mom, I'm sick. I have a really bad sore throat. And I've got sniffles now, and I think I might have the Rona. I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, so Sunday I was trying to find testing and that was impossible. I ran over to an urgent care that supposedly does testing and they, because we couldn't get the online scheduling to work. And they said, come back tomorrow at 1230. So we went Monday and had some nasty surprises. Be careful when you're getting COVID testing. It's supposed mm. to be, you know, free everywhere. Uh, my husband's employer covers it fully, everything else. But this place decided to charge us the full urgent care copay plus $50 it's like oh if you don't meet your deductible and you have to be seen by a provider so even though they show up in free testing sites and just testing sites at the top of Google searches locally mm, nah because we could have just gone through a drive through at Walgreens or CVS and gotten a test for free mm -hmm. um, but we're also in a little bit of a hurry because he was supposed to go back to work Monday and his boss needed to know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, yeah, I paid way too much money and, and they gave him a flu test and pneumonia and 
the COVID rapid. And they said, if that comes back negative, if everything's negative, we'll give you the PCR test. And no, he just straight up came back rapid positive. Mm -hmm. And then I had to scramble around to uh, completely quarantine him because I contacted my other son's school. He's still attending in-person high school and find out what the policy was exactly. So I had to get his VAX records over and I was really happy that the school nurse was like, I've seen him in the halls and I know he's really good at actually wearing his mask properly. <laughs> Just remind him at lunch to sit a little further and as long as he doesn't have any symptoms and there's no shared space, you're fine. Um, I thought we'd get away with just sanitizing every time Victor had to use the bathroom, but no, it has to be no shared space at all, like a full quarantine in order for his younger brother to keep going to school. Mm -hmm. So now we have to share the upstairs bathroom with the youngest kid and Victor basically can't come out of his room at all. I'm delivering meals to his door because he can't, if he goes out into the kitchen to Make shared himself space. eat in the middle of the night or whatever. It's considered shared space. Yep. So I had to get all that locked down. <laughs> but the good news is um, he's apparently he's heard from his boss. He's working for 7-Eleven, which is, that's where he got it. Uh, none of the rest of us have any symptoms and our exposures are very limited. His was <laughs> not limited. I mean, it's also a truck stop, so... Um, saw many people every day and even masking and vaccinated got it. Um, but they said he returned to work the 27th, the doctor said, and his, um, his boss said, yep, you can come back as soon as you're clear. And he might even get paid for the time he's off. That's, that's good. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> considering he's only been there a couple of weeks, I believe that's probably due, if it happens, to part of the federal funding that's been you know, the companies can still get a tax credit on that. Um, and I hope none of the rest of us get it because <laughs> I also found out in this fighting and figuring out the insurance that although my husband's company is paying for all COVID testing still, they ended covering all COVID care. I guess they were doing that and I didn't know. Um, they ended that at the end of June. So I was like, Ooh, they should change that. And they, they, yeah. <laughs> While you're yeah. talking to HR, honey, can you tell them they probably should have told us all that shit up front? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my younger one has started his D and D club at school, and that was really cute and exciting. He baked cookies, and I sent sodas along, and we got him new dice. And I'm trying to get my husband to print him one of these nifty dice towers so he could be a show off at D and D club, but. <laughs> we'll see. But he came home. There's like seven DMs. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Like, he's been trying to start a club for years and couldn't. And now there's a club and they have more DMs than they know what to do with. So they have Everybody something. gets to be a player. <laughs> right. You just rotate it. Yeah, they have a whole bunch of different groups going and they're oh, wow. using addendums like he's playing an artificer. Um they did some character creation and he was really excited to talk to me about it, which I love. Like he knows I know what he's saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel bad for the other parents because I'm sure they're all like, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, they're, and... they're learning math skills. Exactly. Oh, man. <laughs> Especially if they want to go back and do a second edition with Thacko. No. Right? No. No, they're playing oh. five. <laughs> Where I think my hatred of math stems from. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand that. That was horrible. I and I had it. a DM for a while who insisted on using only that. And if you're playing at that and a different edition, can I tell you? Oh, how no. that? When the roles work the opposite sometimes even. Yeah. Math. Um... So the other really cool thing that happened this week was a farmer friend of mine had a huge haul of shiitake mushrooms, like huge. And he posted on Facebook, he said, I guess I need more recipes for shiitakes. And people were pitching in and I was like, I make a great hot and sour soup. 
um, and I liked him for that. But would you sell me any? And he's like, I will just give you some. And he dropped off a bunch at my house, like a lot. <laughs> I sauteed some. I've got some more in the fridge. I went ahead and made hot and sour soup. I dehydrated <laughs> six full racks of them. Wow. Um, yeah. And I'm, he, all he asked was like, give me half, give him half of what I dehydrated. So I've got those. Uh, shrink wrapped for him because I'm not I'm isolating just for everyone else's safety because even though I don't have the Rona <laughs> it's in my house <laughs> yeah and I'm a little stressed out about that um, I uh, was actually talking to my therapist today about it she's like how are you with that because she knows I am subject to complications and so extra scared of it and hearing Ray's story about her friend recently, like that's specifically the type of complications I'm concerned with having. Um, but I'm the one who had to take my son for his testing and, and any exposure that has to happen exchanging, like I'm taking his dishes from uh, after he eats and I'm washing them myself because even though I'm the highest risk in the house, I'm at the least risk of catching it because I got the third shot. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Is he feeling okay? Like, is it so far, like, kind of it's... not going to have to go to the hospital? Yeah, that's... so far, not seemingly like he's going to go to the hospital, not specific trouble breathing. He did get a new inhaler prescription, um, but it's a nasty cough and sniffles and... He was sneezing a lot the first few days and had some stomach trouble, but now it's just, I feel like shit. <laughs> this is terrible. But no fever, um, no actual, you know, just a little fatigue. He isn't like passed out for 12 hours like other people I know have been. So and hopefully the worst is over. And yeah, he's got the Moderna, so should be stick to being a mild case yeah i i saw they had just released like a, a i think it was an npr story about like the moderna being the most effective to help like rebound from was it breakthrough cases excuse me mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. yeah it's so. the most effective for breakthroughs and for contracting it so Hopefully we're good. Two out of three of us yeah. have Moderna. Um, the youngest has Pfizer because it's all he was eligible for. Yeah. That makes sense. So I have a big quarantine sign on the downstairs bathroom so that he hopefully <laughs> does remembers to not go in there. Yeah. So what have you been up to, Ray? Well, I started playing Vampire Bloodlines to deal with the LARP drop from the night in question. And also because I've never played it. So uh, my I husband... I watched some so I... of that. What? I watched you playing some of that. Yeah. And I had to tell you, my husband walked in, looked, and immediately recognized the clan and said, how can she be playing Clan Malkavia when there is no Clan Malkavia? It's because his bloodline came out like 2004. <laughs> Scott has been on my case to play this game forever. Um, my husband... And when I initially tried to play, I did the, they have like, a, you can opt to like choose your clan or you can do a little quiz. Well, I did the quiz and I got my favorite clan, which was Nosferatu. So I'm like, I'm going to play a Nos. Oh God, how do I do anything? Nos is hard <laughs> mode. Like it really is. Like, I'm going to go back once I finish beating it. But you can't be seen, like, anytime you're seen, it's a masquerade break. You have five masquerade breaks you can do. Well, four masquerade breaks, and you have five masquerade breaks, and the game is over. And it's mm. just, it was not a good clan to start with. So this time, because I I wanted to try and remake as close as I can my, my Sabat gang roll trash fire, uh, I did that. And my husband is giving me grief because he's like, why do you always play murder hobos the first time you play a game? I'm, like, <laughs> yes, I'm not a murder hobo in real life. It's fun to be like low humanity, just about everything. Okay, I don't do that. I'm 
I don't even tell the waiter when they get my order wrong. Give me this, at least. <laughs> so. Uh, and then, uh, <laughs> I, I'm, don't, I think I'm a good por portion of the way in the game with the tra with the gang rule. Um, I actually have unlocked three of the four areas right now. Uh, so when I'm doing it on stream, which I'll try to do weekly, I might have to do it on Saturday this week instead of Friday. Um, but uh, I'm playing a Malkavian because my gang, my gang girl just is low humanity. So when you're low humanity, you have very few dialogue options. Usually you have the meanest ones possible. Uh, so, uh, so with my, my uh, Malkavian, I'm trying to go high humanity and like high socials so I can get all the dialogue options because when... That's that's what I've taken it's away from a, years, years of Bioware. It's not a dating sim. But I like <laughs> to have all the options. This is like when you played Dragon Age and you were like, I'm going to romance everyone. And I was like, it's it's Dragon Age. It's not a dating sim. I, you know, you can, you can marry Alistair. You can bang Alistair. You can bang a lot of them. Morgan, you break my heart. But I understand. As long as we're besties. You'll always be my waifu. <laughs> so yeah. Ray just turns every game into fuck, marry, kill is what we're saying here. I guess. <laughs> hey. Not a dating sim. Pretty games <laughs> for life. No. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I admittedly like first character run through, especially with Bioware, like Mass Effect. Yeah, first run is almost always renegade esque. You get to be mean, and then you decide not to be mean. Well, yeah, I get to be mean. I get to make the worst choices possible. And then, when I want to do the proper playthrough, I know what not to do. <laughs> I don't... There's nothing wrong with this. No, it's a, it's a, it's a solid strategy. I'm just... it, it is valid. And, you know, sometimes we all have a little murder hobo inside us. And <laughs> all it wants to do is stab. Or and yeah, in this case, I, the fire axe is like hands down my number one favorite tool. Just a little stabbing, sir. Just, it's fine. Just, just a little stabbing. It's okay. <laughs> it does seem really true to the LARP for Nosferatu to be the hard mode. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. <laughs> uh, so, what about you, Linda? What have you been up to? I've been making stuff. Uh, I am currently wearing the newest dress that I've made. It's the same pattern that I made the last one from, but I I improved the neckline. I put brought the sleeves in a little bit, and I have fixed the bottom. Uh, it turns out gores are your friend. Thank you, Christine, for that uh, knowledge. Because um, <laughs> the dress is cut up and down because it's a vintage pattern. So they're like, obviously women have no curves, and we're going to just cut it straight up and down. <laughs> so I had to add like a, like she even, um, Christine had an, an extra, uh, like it's, um, what is, what does she call it? I forget there's a specific name for it, but it's basically a ruler that's curved. So you can add a hip curve oh, to, yeah, yeah. to a pattern that you're working on. And she just, she had an extra one. So she just gave it to me. So I added a hip curve. I added some gores in. Gores are basically extra little triangles of fabric for people that are not sewers. Um, <laughs> I don't know why they're called gores. I don't know why these things are called darts. I don't know why it's called a hemline. I was going to say, know. Like, it, that sounds like it's the opposite of a dart. <laughs> yeah, basically. I um, know what a dart is. Yes. <laughs> so it's just, it, it fits nicer i'm gonna go and probably fix the first mock-up that i made this is technically a second mock-up because there are a couple more a couple more tweaks i want to make but i think the next one that i'm gonna attempt is i want to do um like a black front and then the bottom splits into a split skirt um i want to do the skirt in red and white polka dots and then i'll put i'll line it in black and i'll wear it to Disney World um, as Minnie Mouse. Minnie. <laughs> you know, because I like Disney bounding. And <laughs> what better way than to make your own Disney bound? Yeah. Um, so, 
that that was fun that was basically like my weekend was making this dress um and then matthew's been making a box um, <laughs> okay <laughs> i don't know if you can hear him i don't know if you can hear the construction sounds no but Great. we can see the faces you're making <laughs> He, he's hammering something right now, and I'm surprised my I'm surprised that my microphone isn't picking it up. But it's it's been uh, hammering and uh, some slight drilling sounds every now and then. So I'm surprised that y'all haven't been able to hear that. But he's he's been making basically a box to carry his minis in. So it's real fancy. It, like it has a lid that flips up from the side, and it's got um, magnetized shelves in it. So mm. he's going all out for it. Uh, it's just I, I. I guess he doesn't realize the sound carries so well. The the garage is right under me, so it's mm. just I'm just hearing. Blah, 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 blah. Oh. <laughs> All right, fine, whatever. <laughs> Hi, kitty. Oh God, sorry. She hopped up into my lap, and <laughs> there was skirt, but nothing under it, so she oh. almost fell off. Hey, baby, how are you? Oh. Um, everything's happening. Uh, the other thing that I made is I made a Christmas pocket so that I can take it with me and wear it when we're our Christmas pirates at Ren Fair. Yay! Yay! So, Yar. Ooh. Yar. <laughs> I now have a wow. pretty, pretty Christmas pocket. Um, That's very pretty. Setters. Yeah, it's got, um, like, it's hard to tell on camera, but it's most of it is lined in, like, a, a metallic gold. So... Like, oh. I don't know if you can even see, but it's got shiny. Yeah. So, wow. very, very pretty. I I found that they already have all the Christmas fabric out at Joann's, and it's on sale. So I was like, I'm going to take a quarter yard of that and a quarter yard of that. <laughs> Could you also put the <laughs> Halloween fabric on sale? No. no? Or, or okay. Out? <laughs> I'm so. not... This weekend we have plans. Our plans are to do like spooky window shopping. <laughs> we both came back negative, so I'm like, can't take away all my Halloween stuff yet. It's not even October. <laughs> yeah, oh, I found the spirit nearest to me, at least in Kennesaw. So it's in okay. the old Sears building at. Uh, yeah. Oh God! Uh, what mall. did I just do? Uh oh. What uh, happened? <laughs> oh, it, it's fine as long as everything is still connected. I think I you hit a you thing. And see you. Yeah. Oh, good. Just my you other monitor just. There we go. <laughs> oh, one of one of your monitors just went blank. That's terrifying. Yeah. No, <laughs> that, that was it. It's fixed now. Thank you, okay, Kitty. Good. <laughs> um, oh, so editing. yeah, I've that's that's I've been making things, and I'm in the midst of making. It's hard to tell what it is right now, but this is another uh, um, uh, fall Bulbasaur. Oh. I have his head and his body. I have, I have almost, almost all of his pieces. And then I got to stuff it and put it all together. <laughs> so maybe by next week I'll have him all done with his little pumpkin on his back. Uh, we'll see. But yeah, that's basically what I've been doing. A flurry of making things. Fabric and yarn is what I do. <laughs> <laughs> and haven't even started the whole Christmas present situation yet. <laughs> all right so now we're gonna get into today's topic discussion which is book club for this quarter because we try and do it every quarter um and the book that we read is called lamb the gospel according to biff christ's childhood pal by christopher moore um it's comedic i mean <laughs> you it gotta is. tell from the title oh <laughs> uh, what did y'all think of it? Well, I love this book. Um, I read it <laughs> ages ago, and um, I think I was reminded to put it on our book club list because I, in my desk drawer here <laughs> in the studio, I've got this. You know, I just sometimes we're sitting here talking, and I'm going through the random crap for years and years in my drawer, and there was a letter in here that was sent to me. So I worked with somebody on the 2008 Obama campaign. 
that was flown in from like Minnesota or something. Really nice guy. Like so nice. Like very religious, perfect mm -hmm. dude. And I was like, I, I don't know. We got to be pals and I was kind of like, I think he'll like this book. You know, I mean, granted it can be offensive if he's too conservative, but he's not. I mean, he's worked with me in this liberal situation and he's gotten used to my shenanigans. So I lent it to him um, before he moved away again. And then something like six years later, I get an envelope in the mail with this very sweet letter when he mailed me back the book. And he was like, Aww. I bet you thought I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> and he really enjoyed it too. <clears throat> and I liked it so much. I think this is the first Christopher Moore, Moore book I read. But I went ahead and I got, let me see, Blood Sucking Fiends, Fluke, or Why I Know Why the Winged Whale Sings, mm. and Island of the Sequin Love Nun. Like, I bought a bunch of his books and read them in a tear after I read Lamb. I didn't yes. keep reading all of them. I eventually, it, it kind of wore off and I don't think any of them are quite as good as Lamb was. Um, but well, I mean, <laughs> they do have a, they do kind of have the, the similar theme of being slightly irreverent. <laughs> yes, he definitely has a style. <laughs> but the, when things with Lamb, I mean, it's not a completely original concept to stick your own version of the Bible. I mean, but he pays right. tribute to that in places for sure. I mean, we can think of uh, Life of Brian. Mm -hmm. If you like Life of Brian, you're probably going to be okay with this. Yeah, I mean, it, it even it, has it, scenes it's kinda... in it that are like that, the monks <laughs> insulting you and slamming the door. Mm -hmm. Um. Like I, I wrote in the notes that it reminded me of um, a couple, and these were these were uh, shows that we did actually at the church that I grew up in. Um, but these uh, church musicals that we would do, there's one. It, a little, they're a little, a little less. Uh, well, I don't know. In the beginning is can be pretty irreverent, but <laughs> um, uh, it reminded me of uh, in the beginning, which is basically the Old Testament, but like. There's this group of people that have been there, and they're there making, like, peanut gallery commentary <laughs> for, like, all these big things that happen. And, like, like when Adam and Eve get kicked out of the garden, they are also there, and they get kicked out of the garden. Uh, when the flood happens, they manage to survive by floating in barrels, I think it is, or something like that. It's, it's very silly. Um, but it's that same kind of, like, it's biblical, but from a... A perspective slightly to the to the, off to the side yeah um and that's i mean people can gather from the title uh, the gospel according to biff christ childhood mm -hmm. pale but the premise of the book uh, for those of you out there listening is the you know angel the celestials decide okay it's time to tell the rest of the story because all the gospels that exist in the bible don't start until jesus is like 30 how about we let Biff tell his story about them growing up? And um, they <laughs> raise him from the dead, stick him in a hotel room with an angel, and make him write these gospels. And I mean, he's the character of Biff is a hilarious bro, sex maniac, fuck up. Like, but he's a great sidekick for somebody who's pure and needs someone to look after him. That's a great best friend to have, right? Like, the nice people that you know have some asshole best friend, but they protect them. I am familiar mm -hmm. with this. I have seen my children <laughs> collect friends like this. Um, and one of the things I really, really loved about it was the level of research in it. Mm -hmm. Like, for his stupid, absurd things that are done comedically in it the research into the background of like the geography of the places he took joshua and biff and the cultures and the language barriers and different religions and i'm a huge nerd for that because i you know studied religion in college and stuff and on my own a lot and so i studied some stuff about Buddhism and Confucianism and 
these different religions that you know they come across and are talked about here and there in the book and there's some like really accurate presentations in there mm-hmm. yeah i do i i like the kind of road trip aspect of it <laughs> yeah <laughs> well it was a lot of time to fill if you were to just make up this story about where he was then right yeah <laughs> And they did a pretty neat job of that. And then the bacon thing, because, I mean, the overarching thing in Christianity, the whole between, you know, Judaism and Christianity and the Old Testament and the New Testament, and like it took all those gazillion commandments from Leviticus that he they would have been living under because, you know, that's the Ten Commandments weren't even... Torah they were writings then and stuff and they were part of the teachings but it all getting boiled down even further into the golden rule of doing to others which does mesh with I mean when I studied philosophy of religion you study study all the major religions if you boil them down to one little philosophy it's doing to others (laughs) it's that be excellent to each other situation like Bill and Ted and you know there's a lot of Joshua, you know, Jesus being very careful. Well, I don't think I can do that. I don't think I can do that. But all these laws they live under and then as they travel, travel, you know, I don't think, I mean, the Pharisees, no one back home is going to know if we have bacon. And I don't think God really cares. (laughs) (laughs) So it's just one of those things, I think we can let that one go. And there are a few things here and there, and they're often dietary things. It's like... Yeah, I, I I don't think he really cares about that so much. And it just gets to be a running gag till by the end of the book when it's like, I thought you couldn't do that. Well, you know, bacon. Um, you, you know, bacon. <laughs> becomes shorthand for that. Like, that's not really as big a deal as the zealots and the Pharisees make it out to be. <laughs> but I love you, that Ray? other point of view. I think there was tribute mm-hmm. to Monty Python in this that was obvious. I think there was a Douglas Adams nod. Um, another cute, clever thing in Christopher Moore's writings that he did with the character of Biff, because Biff isn't likable. Like, right in the first part of the book, the angel's like, oh, God, do we have to? He's such an asshole. <laughs> and, you know, he is kind of an asshole. But he throws all this stuff, and he's writing his own gospel about, like, inventing sarcasm Mm -hmm. and inventing the match and getting an argue, a flat earth argument (laughs) with Christ. Not like, no, it's flat. Like, the water just goes off the edge. Everybody knows that. And Biff is like, I don't know. It, It looks like it curves to me. I think it's round. Well, of course it's round, like a, you know, plate. Like, no, I think like a ball. And Jesus is like, that's stupid. Well, what if the earth is sticky? So he's like talking about gravity, but it's like it's, you're sticky. Mm-hmm. He's like, but invisible sticky. But then he said this thing about, well, I mean, it's more like metaphorically sticky. And if you just decided to believe it wasn't, you would fly off into the air. And that, to me, screamed Douglas Adams because that's the whole trick to flying is to throw yourself at the ground and miss. Yep. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Easy. But I don't know. It was just, it's so well written and so clever and it keeps my attention. Like, even on a reread, I just really enjoyed myself again. I will always recommend this book to people. It is fun. And I've yet to run into anyone actually being offended by it. (laughs) Like, even religious people. But maybe because that's who I surround myself with. Maybe. So it has the right amount of tone. To be slightly irreverent, but not insulting. Yeah, I mean, there's the I mean, there's actual religious references in it, like I said, and some are accurate. And then there's Biff obviously bullshitting, trying to say something, you know, from the Torah and quoting a book with a ridiculous name. I can't remember the name of them, but like, you know, 
<laughs> He'll just make up something that's obviously silly. I'm interested in this, these church musicals you did, Linda. I, I had not heard of either of those. Oh, okay. So, like I said, In the Beginning is kind of, kind of the same sort of tone because the a lot of the characters that you follow in In the Beginning are kind of assholes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a very similar tone. You've got a couple that are like, you're rooting for them, but a lot of the, the surrounding ones are kind of like, uh, I think the one of the characters' name was, it's, it's been a while, uh, it was like Romer, and he, he kept being like, I'm inventing everything, very much like, like Biff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's very obvious that he's not. <laughs> <laughs> but um, also it's a musical, so there's songs like, you know, uh, No Women in the Bible, which is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it's like... It's uh, in a very I liberal will... church. <laughs> well, it's, it's uh, it, like, I remember very specifically one line from from that like i don't know why that one line of music has stuck in my head but like the 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 very end of it is like if abraham begot isaac begot jacob there must have been a her <laughs> put, put women in the song. bible yes yeah, it's, it's just it's 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 very tongue-in-cheek that way um and then cotton patch gospel is very much about uh, the life of Jesus, but it's as if it was set in rural Georgia, which is why we did it, because it was, uh, oh God, where, where was he supposed to have been? Gainesville, he was supposed to have been born in Gainesville, Gainesville, Georgia. And it's just this, like, it started off as a one man show and you can actually, I think, watch it on YouTube, the one-man show, because it was just one guy and then, like, this um, quartet of, uh, like, banjo and a bass and a couple of other uh, instruments. And he was doing everything, but you actually had, there was an entire, like, stage show with everybody else. So we did the big stage show, and it was it was very much the... We're telling the life of Jesus slightly skewed. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, we, we are able to do, we did a, a bunch of, um, those are the two that I remember very distinctly because I was in them. Um, I think, did we do Godspell? I can't remember. I don't remember if we did Godspell or not. Um, I feel like that's a yes, but it's been a long time see i um, love this kind of material so much too yeah you been it's interesting you mentioned mm -hmm. godspell um because godspell does that jesus christ superstar does that mm -hmm. just kind of giving some other points of view um but this one this book does an entirely different time period which i don't mm -hmm. really know of I can't think of off the top of my head any books that do that that try to fill in those missing years other than Life of Brian does a little of that. Yeah, and like even uh, Cotton Patch is they have a couple of scenes where it's young, yeah, young Jesus. Um, but then it it skips forward. So yeah, this was the um, it's the same kind of tone, but it was definitely a, a different like take on because it, it is it, it it goes from. I'm telling people in the temple how to do stuff and I'm 10 to I'm now 30. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like people are afraid to stray away from anything that's not backed up by the Bible as if it was written anywhere near the time it took place. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> by more, by, by one, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was written by a lot of people. A mm -hmm. lot of men. <laughs> and I kind of like how Biff they have this little back and forth where you get his thoughts while he's writing because he discovers a copy of the Bible in the hotel drawer because we know that's a thing. Mm -hmm. And he's like, Idiot. I don't know who this Matthew guy was. That that wasn't our Matthew. <laughs> that guy couldn't <laughs> write for shit. Um, <laughs> and it actually reminded me too, I mean, it's not a Christ story, but when I was in junior high, and this was when I was still... Catholic um, before the church left me 
I had a creative writing class and I found this snippet of a play and I, I can't even, it's really hard. Like I would, I guess I can buy it on Kindle, but it's not the easiest thing to grab, get a hold of is Arthur Miller ages ago wrote a play called the creation of the world and other business. Mm -hmm. And I found it in junior high and I love this thing. And I took a scene from it as part of, it wasn't creative writing. It mustn't, it had to be creative writing because we didn't have a drama class. I don't know. Some class I had and I, we had to do a presentation and we took a scene from that play and it's got a very irreverent tone and it's from creation to when Adam and Eve get kicked out. Mm -hmm. So I pulled this scene where, um, so God made Adam and Eve and he was trying to get them to procreate and he couldn't figure out a way to tempt them to do that. And Lucifer's like, well, I mean, come on. I mean, you should just let them eat the apple because then they'll be curious about things. If they praise you for these flowers, they're going to praise you more for when they understand, you know, how pollination works and, you know just when you give them that knowledge and that science and that curiosity, they're just going to have more to praise you for what could possibly go wrong, you know, type. And I tapped my band nerd friends and we brought risers into the front of the class and I wore all white and I, my black friend, she wore all, or my, she wore all white and then I wore all black and we played out the scene with, God and Lucifer, where Lucifer's trying to convince God that they should totally eat that apple because they'll just praise him more. And it was, yeah, slightly, it was slightly shocking. Thankfully, I was already in public school. Had I tried that in Catholic school, <laughs> I'd have probably gotten expelled. But <laughs> all the rulers. All the rulers, yep. <laughs> I love that different, just a different way to think about stuff sometimes. And that this book. It's just a fun comedic, comedic romp, but oh. like you can relate to the character you know so much more. You know what else? I, I just realized it reminds me of Good Omens. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, yeah. Good, Omens, Good Omens is like a t an entirely different story, but there is the, the beginning part where they're like, you know, talking about how they became besties, kind of. <laughs> what happened to your sword? I give it to them. <laughs> yeah, you just and banish I had, them. They're gonna need the sword. <laughs> I was reminded in this reread too because we just finished watching the last of Lucifer, mm -hmm. and Rob and I were talking about it because we were talking about this change in the celestial order in that show, and you know, Amanda Deal's talking about basically creating like a parliamentary system instead of just like one omnipotent god and running things that way and. It's like, because the angels are being, going around being just a fuck-ups, just randomly granting wishes, like, stupid. And it's such, it's so close to the portrayal of angels in Lamb, where, like, Biff starts yelling at the angels, like, you know why God gave a, made us, don't you? Do you understand? You're just, like, not having free will. You're parts of the machine. You're all a bunch of dumb fucks. And he couldn't stand to just be around you anymore. And that I I love that point of view, and I feel like that carried into this whole idea when you start to meet different angels and in, in Lucifer, and and that's a game in work. There's this kind of like, wow, they're not like they have their specific tasks, which is how biblically, I mean, they were all named and they all had jobs and they were all just very specific cogs in the machine. Like none of the angels in Scripture have any personality. Mm -hmm. And it kind of explains that the same way <laughs> that, you know, Gaiman, I think, had it easier writing things like Good Omens where you're using other ancient mythologies that are, that have whole pantheons. Like you can throw different personalities on, you know, Mercury and... Yeah, it's the same with Supernatural. It's like... I mean, angels didn't become a thing in Supernatural until, like, the third season anyway. Because somebody, I think somebody, one of the writers was like, oh, if there are demons, there must also be angels. 
Mm. And then they then they started that whole thing. That's funny because in the good place, they dance around that a lot. Like, well, not mm. really in heaven, hell, like you're saying, but whatever. <laughs> and I'm really liking that show. And then when he's uh, there's a scene where one of the characters who is a demon is trying to tell a lie and explain who they are. And he's like, well, there are these demons. Oh, wait, that's a real thing. They're Jin because he's trying to convince them he's like an FBI agent who's supernatural investigating. Like, it was just really absurd. But I felt like they're in jokes when you're into these kind of stories. Yeah. And again, you know, all those things we just mentioned, you have some people that are like, but it, it, it's good. It's pretty, it's pretty inter and good entertainment for most of us. So now you have me thinking back to Anomine, which is a tabletop game where you can uh, yeah. be, you can role play as angels or demons or or people, just boring people. But like they mm -hmm. go on, like they have like different types of angels and different types of demons, and you have different archangels or archdemons that you your character is connected with and now I'm just thinking back to that and that was that was a fun game honestly like we it was we played an angel game but it was still lots of fun and we always wanted to do a, de a demon game but never got around to it just well, because it would be murder hobos or a RPG yeah, it, it was, it was an RPG. yeah it's a it's a tabletop RPG. It's put out by oh god, it's the group that does all the things. I have one over here. Like give me two seconds, I can tell you who publishes it. Okay. <laughs> but it's And it, or Inomine... you can just put a link in the notes. <laughs> yeah. Inamine is interesting because you your angel has a true form, which is the biblical true form. So, you know, wheels with eyes. <laughs> That's it. That's it. It's Steve Jackson Games. Oh, okay. It's old. It's old at this point. Um, actually, when we went up to uh, Asheville, uh, in addition to finding a bunch of Trinity and Aberrant books, they had some uh, some of the Anomine books. And I was like, we have a good chunk of them. I'm like, Scott, are we missing any? Do I need to get any of these? He's like, no, not unless you're going to run a game. I'm like, no. <laughs> I know that feel. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you just like to read the books. <laughs> but it, it is a fun little tabletop game. It wouldn't be too expensive now. Steve Jackson games. Yeah, we'll figure that out. And yeah. put it in the notes. We put links. <laughs> but I love this book, and I will continue to recommend it to anyone who has a sense of humor. And I, I don't know, it's just got a special place in my heart. Is as irreverent and comedic as it is that it's well researched and that it makes like the it puts you in that place very well like and then Christopher Moore has a good point at some point Jesus was a little kid mm -hmm. and a teenager and making well, was, that a relatable he... thing and what he had to go through in that part of his life is an interesting he, story he was... even if you're just making that shit up he was resurrecting lizards, right? That was the... <laughs> yeah, when Biff first came across when him. Biff, when Biff first find, the first meets him, he's resurrecting lizards. <laughs> yeah, like his little brother's like smashing him. And it's just like a little trick. <laughs> Puts it in his mouth. Brings it back out. <laughs> Smash. <laughs> that is totally some shit kid would do is when they figured out they could make resurrect little things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, I guess uh, we, as a whole, we do recommend. Ember definitely recommends. Uh, uh, but, yeah, if you like kind of slightly irreverent, but uh, fun, <laughs> then you should read, uh, full name, Lamb, the Gospel According to Biff, Christ's Childhood Pal, by Christopher Moore. <laughs> I don't know if, it, I was, I don't know if you're just supposed to call it Lamb, or Gospel According to Biff, or... I mean, you could search by Lamb Christopher Moore and find mm -hmm. it easily enough. And well, there I we, there recommend other Christopher Moore books, too. If you're a little <laughs> shy of the Jesus stuff, but you want some vampire comedy, he's got that, too. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, so before we move on, I'm going to roll a die for our next uh, our next book on the list. So our list currently uh, contains uh, Trigor by Tom Merritt, Dracula by Bram Stoker, The Alchemist by Paulo Col Colho. Paul Colho. I, I butchered that name, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Memoirs of a Geisha by Arthur Golden, The Book Thief by Marcus Zeus Zusak. Oh, I should have practiced. Um, the Master Trilogy by C. F. Friedman, Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler, The Dove Keeper by Evelyn DeShane and Emily James. Or no, Emily James is her pseudonym. So, um, we're gonna add an, another book to it uh, that just came out by Elvira called Yours Cruelly, but I don't think we can easily get hold of it right this moment because it just came out, so we're not going to add it to this week's, or this this quarter's books for next quarter. I'm making hand motions. Okay, so I shall <laughs> roll the die. I give everything a number, one through eight. I have an eight-sided die. Two. Dracula. Ooh. Going with a classic. Shall we reading? <sighs> How weird will that be? I mean, that well, seems I... really wonderfully appropriate for us. Yeah. We're going to be doing this at about <laughs> Christmas time. So we'll be doing Dracula at Christmas. And um, we can do it and mention that. What's that Icelandic book holiday we talked about before? <laughs> Oh yeah, oh, the yeah. um the the, the, the book uh, flood books. thing that you give the books flood, at the book flood. Yeah. Uh it's uh, So we we'll Yeah, be, it's right around Christmas. Yeah, we'll be and we'll be doing this episode around then. Uh <laughs> I can uh, Jola Boca Flood yeah, I, yeah. I, my pronunciation yeah. of English is crappy to start with. <laughs> so trying to pronounce anything else is awful. I'm sorry. Fine. Um, okay, so I have been told that I should listen to it in audiobook form because mm -hmm. apparently that's terrifying. <laughs> oh, so, boy. It's been forever. I think I've read that in elementary school, so I will happily listen to it instead this time around. I haven't. So that's our book actually read it it's okay i haven't either <laughs> i know I felt like it was mandatory in, in the 80s to be a good goth girl and read it along That's with my fair. edgar Allan nope. poe books because <laughs> i got away without doing it well i've also got like i was in elementary school still so yeah i, I got away without it people. people just assumed i read it like they assumed i read <laughs> all the Anne rice stuff before i read it <laughs> I not like Anne Rice that much. <laughs> but then again, I'm also not 13 anymore, so who knows? There's that. Yep. Alright, so, um, if y'all have a book, you know, thing, a book thing. <laughs> I've, been speaking, I've been speaking English for about 30 years now, and I can't grammar write. Um, <laughs> uh, so says the writer. <laughs> so says the writer. I'm a writer. <laughs> If you'd like to leave a suggestion for our book club list, there we go, um, you can chime in by emailing us at geekgirls at gmail.com or you can tweet us at geekgirls. So, what are y'all most anticipating coming up? Ember? <laughs> um, isolating. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of things to do. I kind of think like, well, maybe I should take this time and make some masks. I have all this fabric cut out. And I've been meaning to like, mm, wait, is that okay? I should probably not make a bunch of masks to give people while there's actually actively COVID in my house, right? Like, <laughs> that's probably not the right thing to do. But I I'll find something. I don't think it something. lives on surfaces that long and you can also disinfect them and give yeah. them a chance to dry out outside before giving them to people. Yeah. Yeah, I just learned the other day that uh, the, back in medieval times, they used sunlight to kill bugs because UV kills bugs. Apparently, the the mm -hmm. not not regular bugs, but microscopic bugs. Those yeah, kind and of I bugs. <laughs> I do know that it, it turns out COVID lives a lot 
less time on surfaces than we used to think, but mm -hmm. whatever. Um, but maybe I should try to make my own pocket for Ren because I do want one to go mm -hmm. with my outfit, but it is a little beyond my capability. Like, I don't know what that bordering tie stuff you use is well, even this, called. It's bias tape. <laughs> I thought it might be bias tape, but I've never actually it's, used it. It's extra and, wide double fold bias tape. Okay, because I looked at some when I last went to the <laughs> fabric store and I was like, I think that's what that is and how big does it need? And I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and I found myself after I made these notes last night, I dreamed that somebody gave me a bunch of stuff and I was unpacking it and there was bias tape in it and I was excited and going to go ahead and try to make a pocket. <laughs> do it! <laughs> I Your mean, brain I is try. obviously have... going, do it. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I don't have anything to lose. But I also don't have... I mean, I guess it's a good time to practice while I'm isolating. I don't want to... Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go to the fabric store and be touching things. But I <laughs> can use some fabric that's in bins going to waste right now to practice, right? Yes, I will send you a link. Okay. About, about making the pocket. That should help you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It seems like a good project to step toward garments. Mm -hmm. Like the only garments I've ever made is skirts and they've just been kind of half-assed and, and tunics, but that doesn't count. It's like a rectangle with a hole in it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, not a whole lot, just surviving mm. being just me and the boys in the house more again. Mm -hmm. What about what you, are you Ray? looking forward to, Ray? <laughs> uh, more bloodlines. Uh, I was actually playing some right before this meeting, so <laughs> gotta get back and figure out how to kill a gargoyle. Uh, currently, that's my quest. Uh, and then um, we've got a spooky window shopping date for this weekend. We're gonna just look, and I'm gonna try not to buy all the things. <laughs> but Scott will be with me to make sure I don't buy all the things that I really want. And we'll, yeah. <laughs> I have to say, Dollar Store has actually pretty good Halloween decorations. I do need to go by there. And it's right, right behind my house. Mm -hmm. uh, then also want to try and like see about getting folks like coordinated for the haunted houses. Like I'm, I'm okay passing on Netherworld because that's all inside. But there's the 13 stories at the Ren Fair spooky thing that I want to do because that one's outside. So you you guys have fun with that. Oh, you don't you don't want to go to the haunted witch's village? That that's fair. It's fine. If if I can if I can be someplace where something is not going to jump at me, I'll be okay. But I have I have literally <laughs> punched someone before. That's, that's what fair. Rob said. I've... I tried to make a haunted woods or a date <laughs> night and he's like uh, I, I I don't want to hit anyone. Yeah, I, I'm concerned for the actors, <laughs> not myself. <laughs> and then I um, actually started this last week and it's my, my gangrel sketch, looking oh, all feral. I've got to fix her because um, <laughs> the limbs are, yeah, it, the proportions are still slightly off, so I still have to fix it before I ink it, but I would like to ink it so I can post it. Mm. on Instagram because that's been a hot minute and then finally this Friday uh, we're going to do Atomic Youth recording for our Aberrant characters so my character gets to meet up with her unofficial nemesis uh, and hopefully we get to have just petty bickering awfulness and I'm excited about it like <laughs> Both players are cool out, out of play. Like, we're excited to have our characters hate each other and just be nasty. <laughs> I'm so excited. Well, she's playing, like, an e-girl type character, and I'm playing, like, an influencer, but I actually don't have any social skills whatsoever. <laughs> so I'm going to lose to her, but I'm going to be so upset about it and just so, <laughs> so petty. It's going to be great. <laughs> What about you, Linda? Uh, more pockets, probably. I have uh, I have a whole bunch of fabric uh, with a coordinating bias tape lined up on my table downstairs to just pin to my 
my pocket um, pattern. It's got so many holes in it, I'm going to have to redraw it soon. Um, <laughs> it's just made out of graph paper. Um, but I have, I was able to, I've been kind of collecting bias tape. Um, it's Yeah, it just occurred to me, wait, I don't have any bias tape. <laughs> Yeah, you, you can. There are ways to make your own, um, with like I, an iron. Um, I have a bias tape maker actually that my that my friend Christine three uh, D printed for me. So fancy. I have a three D printer. <laughs> you do have a three D printer. <laughs> okay, so it's now just, I need that STL as well. <laughs> it's just a little. Uh, basically, it looks like the a little um, like a wedge that has a, a hole through it that you thread the fabric through and then basically you pull it through and then run your iron over it. So hmm. it's pretty simple little piece of kit. Um, I think you could probably find a file for it pretty easily. Okay. Um, let's see, uh, probably gonna fiddle with the pattern more for this dress cause I've got um, a couple of places where I can just fit it just a little bit better because you know looking your best apparently um, <clears throat> tailoring is, is your best friend <laughs> <laughs> you can make something tailored to you exactly and you look awesome so I'm gonna attempt to do that with this pattern it's already ten times better than it was because the top is now fitting nicely instead of being a sack um, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so there's that. Um, and then I don't know, maybe I'll make, maybe I'll be able to make a couple of Bulbasaurs. I've, I've stuffed his head now. So his head is now stuffed. <laughs> <laughs> and his body. Uh, and then um, we actually, uh, Matthew's parents got us tickets to the state fair. So oh, fun! We mm. may be going this weekend. Um, I have to see uh, what time my D and D finale game is it's on Saturday, so we might go Saturday night or maybe Sunday. I'm not sure, but that may be a thing. But yeah, state cool. fair. I don't think I've been to a state fair since I was nine. It's been a while. <laughs> right on. Sounds like fun. Mm. Well, remember, folks, you can always come watch us record live at twitch.tv slash geekgrills on most Monday evenings. Our next one will be. September 27th at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, and we'll have a special guest, J.F. Dubow, to talk about his new book. <laughs> All right. And in addition to the subs and bits that we get on Twitch, we are supported by our amazing patrons. You're the greatest girlfriends on the internet. You can become a patron at www.patreon.com slash girls. And if you have Amazon Prime, you can sub to us for free every month on Twitch. And another way to show your support is by leaving us a review. You can do so on any of your podcast catchers. You can check out what topics we're going to do in the next month on our schedule below on our Twitch page. And if you're a patron, you can suggest a topic to us and we'd love to hear your ideas. So where can we find you girls on the interwebs? I can be reached at 9 of 12 on Twitter and Twitch, and you can hear me on the Heresy and Hearsay podcast. Uh, you can find me on Instagram under Dapple Dame and on Twitch as Ray I know. And you can find me on Twitch and Instagram under the name Madcap underscore Misc, that's M-I-S-C, and you can check out my store at madcapm.com. Thanks for listening, everyone. Good game. GG. GG. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> I got distracted for a minute. I looked at the back of Lamb and I hadn't. And the, there's this line that says, um, in this divinely hilarious let heartfelt work reminiscent of Vonnegut and Douglas Adams. And I was like, that's a really good description. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to raid night attack. Okay. Oh, let me look up and send you that link for pockets. Yes, you send me the pockets. And I'm going to ask my husband to look for a file to find me a bias tape maker. 
Mm-hmm. And so, I don't know. Maybe I'll have to Google. So most bias tape comes in packs that are about three yards. Um, there are ways, there and you can go. look this Ryan up as well, but there are ways to um, sew the fabric to itself at an angle so that it's not a straight edge when you're, it, it just, it makes the bias tape stronger. Um, there, are, there are plenty of t- tutorials <sighs> on the YouTubes for that. Uh, blah, 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 close that. Look over here. Search. Apparently Walgreens has a, I got a, a plush kitty from them last Halloween. Apparently they have plush, or Halloween before COVID, uh, and they apparently have the same kind of thing, but it has wings now, so it's a bat instead of a cat. And I'm like, I, I want it. Mm. I left my kitty down in Augusta with Sean. I need a replacement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got to call the shelter. It's a little... Well, I guess it's not that early. But I gotta make sure to touch base to get the... make sure I get the list this year for costumes. And then put out the plea to everyone to send me costumes. The local... There's a local closeout store that apparently has a whole bunch. That makes me excited. Okay. I have sent you the link to it's it's a pretty short thing but it kind of shows you her method um did you email it or put it in chat somewhere it's it's in it, i uh direct message it on discord to you okay all right cool let's see i will try to find the gumption and time at the same time to do the thing and then if it works, yeah, do- I have a feeling it'll go the same way it do- does when you do- get a new thing. Like mm-hmm. when I took the class and I'm doing the tote bags and I make all the tote bags, all the masks, all the pouches. You, you see how how many pockets I've made. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, <laughs> bless you. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty short little video, but it just kind of basically shows how she does it. And then I think... Like, that's how I was able to look at the thing. I think the longest part of it probably is going to be drafting your pattern. You just have to decide how big you want your pocket to be. So that this may, is like that may not double take fold, much time. you said? Uh, it is extra wide double fold bias tape is what I use. Okay. Uh, when she does it in her video, she uses just ribbon that she has in her stash. Mm. So you could you could do that. I just, I like the bias tape because it's very neat and tidy. I can see that. Because I say I to remember you mentioning before that you had run out and used something else. And I was just like, okay, there's a good reason to use. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you, you can use ribbon. Um, and I'd be afraid late- to sew ribbon. We have to be really good ribbon to not Well, tear. also, so the lady that, she is a historical dressmaker, so what she is, <clears throat> does for her, like, ribbon is she f- hand, frell, hand fells the edge of it. You don't have to do that. <laughs> you can just put a, you can just put a, a, a line of stitches across like this. You do not have to sit there and hand frell the edge <laughs> of your ribbon. That's just what she does. And she okay. explains. She's like, I'm just crazy. This is how I do it. You don't have to do it this way. I can understand that. Yeah. Oh, you can get a whole set of four different bias tape maker sets. 6, mm-hmm. 12, 18, 25 millimeter for $5.35. Nice. Damn. I think mine is an inch i think mine's an inch i'm not sure it works so yeah <laughs> and i mean the sgl is even better because they can just whip it off in the printer mm-hmm. and then it's you know pennies 
or free because I already have the shit in the house if you want to think about it that way. Uh, <laughs> Ray, can you put in the notes the link for that game? Oh, yeah, I put it in the planning, but I can do that. The... In the what? In the, the girls, oh, the girls the... Only. channel. Oh, okay. I can do that. All right. Well, I can do it myself then. Okay. Yeah, it, it's a nominee, and they have a list of like all their books. Right on. Yeah, I like to add little stuff like that to the posts. Oh, and the only title we had was Bloodlines is not a dating game. Works for That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Bloodlines is not a dating sim. <laughs> or dating sim. Yeah, that's what it was. There were a bunch of other good things, but like I can't type. And they only had about five people in, and they were not contributing. It's fine. At um, least they were there listening. Yeah. Yeah, Mike, um, by the way, I think has definitely been a help there. Um, is he doing? How's he doing? He's actually streamed a couple times. He streamed once and he really heard his voice and was had a concern. And then he did a show where he just talked to one of his old bandmates and they played a lot of old music and told stories. And then um, that night I tuned in and he randomly in talking about streaming and this and that he started talking about our show and he didn't even know I was there and he was telling people about like I mean sometimes you know might be a slower pace than you like because they take on different topics but it's you know women hosting and it's way past due just getting their point of view on stuff like it's not shoving feminine does your th feminism not your throat or anything but it breaks my heart that they've been doing this for so long and they don't have a very large audience that shows up and you shall go follow them and I was like oh my god I'm gonna cry and he's like oh you're here I'm like oh shit <laughs> <laughs> and we had a bunch of follows out of it and stuff and it was just really Aww. sweet he was like I've been on it and it is such a great show and he's like it made me think when I was watching the other day like points of view he was talking about Ray talking about her actual experience being in gymnastics mm -hmm. and he was just like I mean they were talking about this stuff and just a different way to think of it and a point of view that I wouldn't have had um, and you sh everybody should be listening to them Aww. so oh yeah sweet um, but he streamed last night too for a little bit he's trying to take it easy he's like actually making a set list and only doing you know, so many songs so he doesn't hurt himself, but he's feeling mm -hmm. a bit stronger and doing a little bit more every day. Like his teeth are still numb. Mm -hmm. He seems to have some nerve damage. I told him it could take a while to heal and I didn't want to say anything. Like, dude, that might never change. Um, but nerve damage is the worst. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then his face being a singer, like he's really, really lucky. Oof. Well, he's lucky he lived, but he's also lucky for sure that he can sing like he he's eating on one side of his mouth because it just feels weird to eat over there where you can't feel yeah <laughs> but he appreciates how much he's getting better so with bloodlines is not a dating sim you might be able to work the drawing you're already working on in. <laughs> or incentive to actually finish it yeah i was just like <laughs> originally i was gonna do like i found a model for with that pose like that pose was perfect but the model is like incredibly thin and i keep going back and forth between like well i'd be a vampire like it's my character but it's a vampire and I'm like as a vampire i would be pretty thin i'm like would i be that thin i don't know and i'm like so i'm fighting with it in that respect i should just like use her body because it's it's very vampire thin <laughs> vampire chic <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it, I think vampires actually... stay the body type they had when they got turned. Uh, I, it seems to depend because, like, I I think with White Wolf they they had changed their position on it a couple of times. Like in mm. Bloodlines, they're specifically talking about how like you don't need glasses mm -hmm. because 
your your eyes just fix themselves, but also you're living on a liquid diet, so usually you um, like emaciate. You go and thus everything becomes starker. But I'm like, there else is Misi. Zabisi could be whatever they want. And, like, I would totally also see, like, a Nosferatu, a Nosferatu that just gets, like, yeah, the same big and totally bloaty. And... I love Nos. I wonder Nos. if they self-actualize. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, and also, like, eh. Like, I don't but visualize okay. Bruja as super wafy. No, no. But I could see a, tw- I could see a Gangrel being wafy. Or at least more so. Sinewy. With... Definitely type different I proportions of what I have. Like an athletic type. Yeah, because Like Tremere and Toriador I... would go around being all heroin chic. <laughs> it's just like, it's the legs. I'm like, I can fix the leg or I can just like embrace the torso and make the torso smaller again. And the only reason I even made that large is because, well... I know well, what I have. it's a very feral pose. I, <laughs> I would go toward her pose. legs being stronger. Yeah. I do love the pose. It's really good. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll talk to you soon, girls. I'll connect with JF this week and get him added in here if he doesn't already exist in here. Make sure he's clear on how that works. And if he's not and we have to switch formats, I'll let you know. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Stay Bye. safe. Hope yes. everybody feels better. <laughs> so much hand sanitizer. <laughs> I know. I just want dinosaurs I want my dino whore Omnivore, carnivore, herbivore I'll fuck them all till I'm dinosaur Archaeopteryx extend those sexy wings. It makes me think the nut. I could stroke it all night long. Velociraptor, give me some more, you big dick of sore. I'll fuck them all till I'm dino sore. Megalosaur, give me your ultra megalodon. Psychosaurus, you shake me, you're breaking my heart, heart on. I wanna go back, back to the past, for that sweet dino ass. Wind back my clock, tickety tock, for that fat dino cock. Please take me home, I'm all alone, stuck in a world with that dinosaur. The dinosaur. <laughs> Triceratops, so oh, can you chop me? You make me horny to the power of three. I have only one wish for my broken serrat leg. I want a T-Rex to masturbate When we're alone, I'll polish your bones to screw down a phone I'll fuck them all till I'm dinosaur Ankylosaurs, you will someday become gas Till then use your tail to pound my ass Stegosaurus with your lovely lady plates Why don't you come please sit in my face 
What can I do? I like to screw. I bet they did too. I'll fuck them all till I'm dino sore. Make the show, give me your ultra mega low dime. Type me so this, you shake me, you're breaking my heart, heart on. I wanna go back, back to the past, for oh, that sweet dino ass. Wind up the clock, tickety tock, for oh, that fat dino cock. Please take me home, I'm all alone, stuck in a world with that dinosaur. With that dinosaur. Oh, what a boy. <laughs> Mike TV. Uh, I have a challenge for you yeah, now that yeah. now that you're back and healed. Yeah. What's that? Radio edit. Oh, I thought. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, Radio uh, edit for Paleophile. Now, now that you're now that you're streaming again, that can be a challenge. Can you do a radio edit? Yeah. For that's, Paleophile. That's, that's a, actually a really curious. I I, I mean, I, of course, of course, right? Of course. And, and the thing is, like, it, and often and it, often it's the go, radio it's going to be hard. But often they become they sound much much dirtier. Like like, like that's like yeah. Smurf you. You know, like, like like I have a song called Fuck You I Want To. And we played, and we were pl we we are we are at the show, and this girl that booked us, she's like, oh, by the way, we were doing a court, it was like a corporate event, like, oh, by the way, you can't have any swears, and we're like, our entire our entire set list was, we, we were like, because we were like, do we have any, do you have anything that you want us to do, play or not play? And she's like, just do whatever. So we're like, okay, yeah, corporate event, yeah, we're gonna, do, we're gonna put in every fucking filthy song we can. So, so, um, so yeah, so we, so she's like, no bad swears. So we just changed the lyrics to fuck you, I want to, to smurf you, I want to. And and yeah, and then and we were not asked back. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the check cleared. Yeah, the check did clear. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. So that's that's the challenge. What's the next song? So all right. So this is a song called "See Me." Um, this is actually this is one of the singles off of my 2019 release, which was it was a massive Titanic album. It took two years to make. I worked on it literally from the moment I went the moment I got up in the morning to the moment I went to bed at night, for for a good a good year and a half. It was crazy. Intense work, but and this is so. This is one of the singles from that song or from that album. And, uh, if, if if for whatever reason you are uh, not hip to the fact that Mike streams at twitch.tv slash Mike TV Live, and you are watching us right now on Twitch, what I want you to do right now is head on over to that URL and make sure that you follow him because he is going to be continuing to stream. He's yep, going to have a bunch yep. of really awesome guests, and he's going to create awesome shit like the stuff he's about to play right now. One more time tonight. Grand comeback of Michael Dot Television. So many faces that don't see me I've been so many places With so many faces I've gone unseen And I'm all alone And I'm on my own Getting lost in a bottle, going for throttle, so I couldn't see. But drink don't make it better.